need. Hello and welcome to the primetime news on Joy News on Multi TV. I am Gifty and Apia. This bulletin is also live on Allied Broadcast Network, that is ABN Sky Channel 290 in the United Kingdom. We have 60 minutes of local and inter international news, business and finance and sports. But first, the top stories. Over 200 families have been rendered homeless as demolition exercise at Ajay Kojo in Tema tense violent. President Mahama says a lack of inclusion would prevent African countries from being truly secure. Get rid of foreign nationals encroaching on Bui National Forest Reserve, says Member of Parliament for Banda. Coming up, coming up on business tonight, President Mahama seeks international cooperation to process mineral resources into secondary products. On the international front, President of Now over 200 families have been rendered homeless as a result of a demolition exercise allegedly carried out by the Tema Development Corporation at Sraha East, a suburb of Tema. The exercise turned violent when security personnel had to fire warning shot to ward of residents bent on salvaging what was left of their property. Many of these families have been rendered homeless. They had to pass the night outside as a result of the demolition exercise carried out yesterday. Many of them are now in a dilemma, not knowing what to do or where to go from here. We'll be speaking to some of them briefly to find out what exactly happened here yesterday. The exercise itself was not peaceful. Our filming of the demolition exercise attracted the wrath of some of the people around. An official believed to be a member of the TDC tax force pulled out a gun from a polythene bag, firing a shot aimed at my cameraman, signaling him to stop filming. It was a run for life. The heavy presence of the Joint Security Force alarmed residents as they looked on for their houses to be pulled down. The Member of Parliament for Tema West, which includes areas around Ajay Kujo, Natoshi Ado, expressed dismay at the exercise, saying she was not informed. We have always told TDC in TME that whenever you want to do things like this, consult some of us now. You're representing Kofono. Say the Bayer Bibiania, you know, Mbaba Becasa. Say you're negotiating with the Bayer Sabi, and Nipa now beton us as an ama. And to say Nipa Yam from Swa, or be at me as Amane do Lintel. Where was TDC when they were building? Yes. We are going to go there and ask them for an explanation. Yes. Whatever it is for humanitarian reasons. As for me, I have a problem. I have a problem with TDC. It looks like TDC is interested in money and not people. Yes. This nearly resulted in a scuffle between the MP and some security personnel. So why don't you shoot me then? Why don't you? That is your speciality. Who do you think you are? Residents are still in shock, describing their destruction of their property without prior notice as unbelievable. Right now, what they have written on the walls, when we trace TDC, we can't see final warning and remove. We, we, we can't see it. So it's not formal. So they are using their position today to, 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 to suppress those of us who are inferior in society. Some claim they have documents showing ownership of the parcels of land. We do the process from TDC to TME. Did they give you approval? Yes. 
they give us approval. That's the document that I showed to you. Some of us, when we started the project, we have to inquire from TDC whether we can go on with the project. I, for instance, I went there, I met the tax force leader, Anthony Kratus. So I asked him that I want to do some project over there. What should I do? He said there's no problem. I should go on and do the project. So Angry residents threaten to rebel and take the law into their own hands if the matter is not properly addressed. When they come and sit there, they, they, will, they will hear mass murder. They will hear mass murder always. George Kofi Ameyao is the spokesperson for the family which sold out the land to the residents. So then if indeed say this, you think you, you lay claim to this property, what... What made you refuse to meet the MP of this area? What made you refuse to discuss with the assemblyman of this area? What made you refuse to notify the family who gave this land out? What, what made you refuse? Do you think that TDC, you are a law court of your own, you can decide one day that we are going to demolish the structures and we demolish? Is that the kind of country we are living in? The way forward is this. TDC should be someone with a family. Everybody brings their document to prove once and for all who is the rightful owner of this land. That's all. Shattered and displaced, residents say all they want is to get their lives back. Matilda Pomaga for Joy News, Sraha East. Well, we're here to get some reactions from the Tema Development Corporation there. Let's go to the Ashanti region where drivers at Enche and Hamile stations at Bantuma in Kumasi are unhappy about the Kumasi Metropolitan Assembly's decision to relocate them to the Abinchi market. The drivers who said they were given one hour to relocate from the two stations today described it as unfair. It was arrived at after their counterparts at the KJT terminal insisted they would all relocate together to provide equal opportunity. But drivers at Bantama Station expressed dissatisfaction and gathered at the two stations in the early hours of Wednesday to protest the assembly's directive. Military personnel who were supervising the exercise immediately intervened and asked them to disperse. This did not go down well with the leadership of the two stations. They insisted no prior notice was given to them. The member of parliament for Bantoma, Kwabna Kukufu, had to engage the leadership of the stations to resolve the issue. He, however, said the subcommittee of the KMA has the mandate to carry on with the duties and orders of the assembly. Away from the country now, President John Dramani Mahama has said a lack of inclusion will prevent African countries from being truly secure. Speaking at the World Economic Forum Wednesday in Switzerland, President Mahama argued that while drawing in foreign investors was important, it was also important to promote a homegrown business industry that would more directly enrich Africans. The World Economic Forum has one of its aims, inclusion. A panel discussion on Africa's future was held Wednesday in Davos, Switzerland. The discussion included two sitting presidents from Ghana and Nigeria. In a discussion on what the Africa of 2050 might look like, a number of participants took on the issue in different ways. They argue that opening and supporting more foreign investments would naturally trickle down to the Please. According to Nigerian-born billionaire Aliko Dangote, economic advancements such as a continent-wide common market would help. You know, going forward, now you say, okay, fine. If we are going to even grow at 4.5% for the next to 2050, which is about 37 years, it means that Africa will have a total GDP of about 9 trillion. 9 trillion, that's twice China today. And it can happen, it's possible. You see, but what we need to do is that the governments really, they have to make a policy where Africa will not only be supplying raw materials. The panel also featured the executive director of Oxfam, Winnie Yanjima, an ardent advocate for more active efforts to foster economic and social inclusion in Africa. For her, growing foreign investment in Africa has not always nourished prosperity. Six out of the ten countries that are most unequal are in Africa today. And what we are seeing is more and more citizen insecurity as we have in Latin America. And it is an expression of the majority of people feeling locked out of governance, feeling that the rules are rigged in favor of a few. And unless we address this question of inclusion, of 
creating jobs, both economic and political inclusion, I'm afraid insecurity will continue to rise. Sitting presidents on the panel, Nigeria's Good Luck Jonathan and Ghana's John Dramani Mahama, noted building up the economies of the various nations remained a primary goal and a long standing source of work. For Ghana's president, John Dramani Mahama, a lack of inclusion would prevent African countries from being truly secure. If you're taking products from Nigeria and bringing them to Ghana, you have to go through like five, six, seven border checks. And at every border check, the amount of money you have to pay, especially in illegal collections, is so much. And so it, it needs a certain political will to be able to do that. And I can see that that will is beginning to develop. In Dakar, um, a few months ago, we passed a common external tariff. And so that paves the way for us to start to create a free trade area. We need to take down the barriers, take down the border posts. One of the things we're doing is join border posts between our countries so that there's just one border post to clear. And the key problem where inter-African trade is limited is transportation infrastructure. Mm -hmm. For you to move from one African country to the other, sometimes you have to go to Europe, mm -hmm. go outside Africa for you to access another African country. So we need and to go to the airlines. Link, uh, yeah, of course, airlines, rail system, uh, until you get these uh, road linkages, until you get the infrastructure in place. The political decision is simple. The uh, president can just wave anything over that. But until we get the infrastructure, Inter-African trade becomes a uh, limited factor. Now, the Media Foundation for West Africa says government must justify the inclusion of Ben Doche Malo on its payroll. Ben Malo was recently appointed as senior advisor to the president and head of communication at the presidency. The foundation says the move defeats government's argument that the country's wage bill is largely to blame for economic challenges facing the country. There's more in the following report. Ben Doche Malo, who was a presenter at the BBC World Service, left his recent job as chief executive producer of UN Radio to take up his new position as spokesperson for President John Mahama. Specifics of his job description are yet to be made public, but concerns of overlapping with functions at the Information Ministry are ripe. Given that the Ministry of Information exists, the minister and two deputy ministers are operating and paid by the taxpayers' money. We still have the, uh, the information services department that has, you know, units across the country in all um, district assemblies, and of course at the ministry with a director and being paid and managed by state funds. One wonders why we would have another senior level appointment, you know, at the presidency to do the same functions as these institutions and persons are supposed to do. The Media Foundation believes the timing for the appointment is wrong, hence its call for justification of his inclusion on government's payroll to the people of Ghana and the subsequent reduction in the number of persons handling government communications. If the same government comes out to say, look, our wage bill is too high, you know, remuneration is taking all our money, and at the same time it is... The government is appointing new and more people. You wonder whether they are telling us the truth. Fact is, Ben Dochemalo comes to government communication machinery with a wealth of experience in broadcasting and diplomacy from a level as high as the United Nations. Question is, how will he fare in the local politics of Ghana? I expect him to succeed because if you are a communications professional, your job is to manage difficult situations. We are in a very, very turbulent political environment when it comes to political communication. You would have to also deal with, um, even internally, people at the presidency and also people within the NDC party. As a communicator, you know, and a, prof a professional one as such, I expect that he would know how to maneuver his ways. Gifty Andopia, Joy News, Aqua. Now, the West African Network for Peace Building has denied its human security report that, suggesting, that suggested the country is heading into a state of insecurity. Now, the executive director of the network, Imano Bombandi, says the report was not subjected to peer review and did not capture a true reflection of the security situation in Ghana. OneF's Human Security Quarterly Report on Early Warning Signs revealed, among others, pressure on infrastructure as a result of rural urban migration leading to social unrest. 
The report also mentioned political activities of both the ruling NDC party and the opposition NPP as capable of causing unrest if they are not checked. Government, through the Ministry of Information and Media Relations, has described the report as without evidence. The executive director of the West African Network for Peace Building, Emmanuel Bombande, first expressed regret at the report, which he agreed carried some inaccuracies. If you look at the period of Ghana leading up to the 2012 elections and following on that eight months of the Supreme Court hearings, there's no question that all the indicators pointed to a more heightened tension within the Ghanaian political and social milieu more than ever before. And that is why you cannot describe Ghana now to be heading towards heightened tension precisely because we came out of that. He however maintained that there was a gradual increase in crime despite police visibility and called on the various stakeholders to act immediately. The, the growing level of activity and expansion in population in our cities and in our towns is exerting more pressure in how you are providing security and protection for people. Mm. And to that extent, you will understand therefore that in the list of our priorities, that is one area we cannot compromise because if we take our eyes off what criminal activity does is that when the response is not adequate enough to deal with the threat, then criminal gangs find comfort to even do more. He also called for a holistic approach in dealing with the challenge of human security, taking into consideration growing urbanization and influx of other West African nationals into the country. The challenge is more in terms of how are we rigorous in ensuring that when you are entering, you are entering for a particular purpose and that you are not going to engage in any activity that is negative. So then it's no longer just about the border, but it's also about how immigration is ensuring that when you come in, you come in for the right purpose. And if you are to work here, you must go to immigration and get the necessary permits, which means immigration now is able to know whether there is any good reason why you should work here. Because if there is no good reason why you should work here, then you cannot work here. He however maintained that data captured in the report represented the true situation on the ground. The data captured in the report indicates that crime in the greater Accra region had increased to 133, up by over 60 cases recorded in 2013. The network also expressed concern about the the network also expressed concern about the introduction of new waves of crime, such as kidnapping, and called on government to act immediately. Member of Parliament for Banda, Ahmed Ibrahim, says foreign nationals encroaching on the Bui National Forest Reserve is a national security threat. Interacting with the chiefs and people of the area, he called on the national security to get rid of them. Meanwhile, communities who claim they have been resettled far away from the Volta Lake, which is the source of their employment, are asking to be relocated where they can undertake fishing expedition. One of the major problems facing the resettled communities of the Bui Dam catchment area is their proximity to the fishing area. Settlers claim they have been resettled far away from the lake, their major source of employment. According to these settlers, they have also complained about this to the Bui Power Authority, but nothing has been done. The Bui Power Authority says there is nothing they can do about the situation since the communities voted for where they wanted to be resettled. The situation has forced some of the fisher folks to temporarily settle at the Bui National Park in order to get closer to the lake, citing the fact that some foreign nationals have taken the lead and making money out of the situation. According to the Paramount Chief of the Banda Traditional Area, Osaberma Okutridom Kujusitu, an area he selected earlier called Gradau, is still available and asks the communities located far away from the lake to come together and dialogue on being relocated to Gradau. <laughs> Because we have visibility studies, we have 
grada o ya e ben ha yi ensuo no e be cha ho nti mi hia se nka e na mo djuma mo ye nti mo mra na mo metna ha se mpo wo mo se wo mo mpene na chinchina wo betu mo akoba bia wo na me jina ho akese sa sa se na da ho no me dia ma mo because se mo ko akira mo ntumi nya djuma no mi kan ye no wo mo mu tete wo mo de wo mo wo mo de wo mo ko bata ni pafufro ma wo mutu wo mo fo bi nti e ba sa na dodo aye e twi asem se na chi se wo mo ma ha the member of parliament for banda ahmed ibrahim bemoaned the activities of the foreign nationals who have encroached on the Bui forest reserve and asked national security to investigate and get rid of them borders on national security and therefore, DICEC, having sat upon it, would have to report to the Regional Security Council, who would then consider the issues in the security perspectives. The National Security Coordinator, either in the National Capital, will have to come in. And if possible, I think we have to go and dialogue. And if dialogue will not solve the problem, then I think force must be used to resettle the people to wherever they have to. because. The whole Ghana have committed our entire resources, totally about $622 million into that project. Therefore, to allow some people just in the course of their activities to threaten the very project that we are all celebrating, I don't think it will be in the good interest of Ghana. The interaction was facilitated by the Ghana Association of Sustainable Fishing Communities. You're watching the prime time news here on Joy News on Multi TV. A quick breather, we'll return with some more news. Please stay. You're welcome back. Police in the northern regional capital, Tamale, have begun investigations into the attempted murder of a 20-year-old second-year medical student at the University of Development Studies, Salma Aisha Yakubu. Salma Aisha Yakubu, a resident of Snit Flat in Foy, a suburb of Tamale, was attacked by unknown assailants while she was alone in her apartment. She was left in a pool of blood in her bedroom with deep cuts on the head and severe bruises on her neck which suggested her assailants tried to strangle her. The student hours later regained consciousness and managed to descend to the ground floor, bleeding profusely, but collapsed and lay helplessly on the floor. The timely intervention of neighbors who called in the ambulance service saved her life after she was rushed to the Tamale Teaching Hospital, where she's currently responding to treatment. The Northern Regional Police Public Relations Officer, ASP Ebenezer Tete, tells Joy News that preliminary investigations by the police at the residence of Salma Aisha has revealed traces of blood on the walls and sofa, which suggested the victim struggled to get down from the two-story building, adding that the police will track down the perpetrators and bring them to book. The condition was then very critical. She could not talk. She was in a coma. So all that we did was to uh, ask a few more questions and then we have the police station. Uh, we have since started investigation to the whole matter. And uh, since it is the lady uh, who can give us a lot of information as to what's happening on that fateful day. And uh, as it is now, she's not talking. We will continue to wait until she's able to talk to the police and provide us with uh, certain vital information. Yes. It would be too early for anybody to draw such conclusions. Um, as I've told you, uh, she was in the house. She was supposed to attend lectures. And this thing happened. Uh, the parents, we are told, stays uh, you know, in Accra. So the parents are not here. We don't know what exactly the parents do now. But that maybe it might be because of a connection with the father or the father, the father or the mother. 
we have not taken their statements yet. So we will not be able to establish whether the mother or the father is in competition with anybody that might prompt the person to contact somebody to come and do this. It is a purely a criminal matter that we are looking at now. Okay, an attempted murder case. And we'll pursue it to its logical conclusion. If during the course of the investigation it comes out that that is it, then we we'll also take it out from there. So for now, it will be too early for me to draw that conclusion that it is contracts. It was an alleged contract killing or an attempted contract killing. Okay, so in relation to that particular story, this is the story that we shared on our social media platform, Facebook, that is. And we say that it appears that reported cases of murder and abuses are on the rise by the second. A few days ago, a woman beat her daughter to near death over 10 pesos. We can also recall the Stambik Bank worker who was murdered by a 22-year-old man at her residence. And on Monday, that's today, a 20-year-old medical student was stabbed to death in Tamale while a man was also arrested for beating his wife to death over 80 Ghana cities. The question that we put out there to you is to share your thoughts on what is accounting for this trend. And we've had a lot of comments coming through and we'll read out some of the comments to you. Nana Kofi Jenfi says, economic stress. Amashong Isaac. Amashong Isaac. Well, Alexander Tete says, what else will these boys are bre what else with these boys are bre uh, economy Derek Ado Brown says is it because of poverty Abochi Steven Kwedo I think lawlessness is breeding in our society of late and the government should take the pragmatic steps to stop the trend before it escalates the laws of the country should deal ruthlessly with the perpetrators of these acts a very thoughtful one there from you Abochi Steven Kwedo there so this is what is trending on our social media platform and would like you to join us there on facebook for slash joy news let's know what you think about the stories that are making the headlines but let's move on with some other stories but we're still in the northern region well in the upper west region regional police command wednesday morning stopped the operations of a local radio station sugmali fm six police men led by the acting upper west Pol Public Relations Officer of the Ghana Police Service, ASP, Edmond Edinkra Namiche, during, went to the station during the morning show program and dismantled, disconnected, and removed two central processing units from their computers. Also picked the two panelists, former World Central Youth Organizer of the New Patriotic Party, Abudu Muniru and Braima Matthew, the 2012 parliamentary candidate of the People's National Convention for the Dafiema Busi Isa constituency. They were discussing the recent upsurge in cases of armed robbery in the Wau municipality when six gun wielding policemen marched into the studios, ordered them to stop the program, picked the duo out and drove them to the Upper West Regional Office of the Criminal Investigations Department of the Ghana Police Service. They were asked to write statements which they refused to do. ASP Nyamiche explained the action of the police. Fighting them to come and give us, you understand, the information that they have, the information that was put uh, in the public domain, they should come and then substantiate and give us, maybe so to give us the, a lead. What is the information? The information was that they, they are aware uh, somebody is training uh, armed robbers at, in a section in town and police were aware they are also aware for now as i'm standing here i'm not aware so since they are aware they are here to lead us to where uh, the supposed uh, camp for the training of uh, these armed robbers and even if they know uh, some of uh, these armed robbers they can lead us to arrest them ASP Nyamiche also said they were investigating if the radio station is licensed by the National Communications Authority. Efforts to speak to the two panelists failed. Meanwhile, the general manager of Tsungmale FM, Abdella Dan Hassan, has expressed worry about the behavior of the police. On a radio talk show, has made derogatory statements against police just to come in there and take the, uh, to take the gadgets away. I made a straightforward point that it is something that is unheard of, is untoward, you cannot take such an action. I heard the PR also did indicate that we don't have a license. The last time I had a discussion with him, and he made a similar point, and 
reiterated as to whether we pay our uh, 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 our tax at all. I asked him whether he works with the Ghana Revenue Authority. If you suspect we don't pay our uh, taxes, then you go to the GRA and let GRA come for us. In any case, if you're working within less than an, a year, how do you expect us to pay uh, our tax when that is not the regulation of the MCA? Rafik Salam's report from WA. As part of addressing the institutional and regulatory challenges confronting the transport industry in Accra, the Steering Committee on Urban Transportation in Accra, Scooter, has introduced a new sticker for the various commercial vehicles. Now, this is to bring uniformity and sanity in the commercial transport operations. According to the AMA, the findings of an operation embarked on last October 2013 to unionize all commercial vehicles has made it necessary to use a uniformed color for the stickers of commercial vehicles operating in the region. This is expected to have started in January this year. Blue color stickers shall be issued for all categories of trotros and red stickers for all categories of taxis. It is only these permits that would be acceptable for operation within our 13 jurisdictions. The new vehicle stickers will be issued to them upon completion of permit renewal formalities. The Steering Committee on Urban Transport in Accra, Scooter, led by the Chief Executive of the Accra Metropolitan Assembly, gave an ultimatum after which sanctions will be applied on those who fail to comply. By the 31st of March this year, we expect all operators to have acquired this permit in order to operate within our 13 jurisdictions. Please note that the closing date is 31st of March this year, after which non-compliance operators will be dealt with according to our respective laws. According to the AMA chief executive, discussions are underway with manufacturing companies and financial institutions for the acquisition of the buses to be used for the project. The first phase of the bus rapid transit is expected to take off on July 1 from Amasaman to Tudu in the Central Business District. Emmanuel Ante, reporting for Joy News, Accra. AIDS broadcaster Komla Dumo caught global attention during his time at the BBC. Some Africans in London, home city of the BBC, related to his stories from the continent. Now here are some thoughts from some of them. The first time I was on BBC program Africa something, and I was very proud to see my fellow countrymen presenting such a wonderful program on BBC. Actually, his passing away is a big loss, not to only Ghanaians, but I would say to all Africans. Uh, to have such a prominent person working for BBC was something to be proud of. And uh, I'm very sad that he's gone suddenly. All I'll say is may he so rest in perfect peace. It is a very sad news. And I'm, I'm very sympathetic about the family. I wish them all the best. When I had the sudden, the sudden and then the uh, premature death of uh, Kumla Dumont, in fact, uh, it, was, it was on the Facebook. When I, when, when I heard it, uh, I saw it, and then I, I asked a friend, who is that uh, Kumla Dumont? Because uh, you can see a lot of people making some comment about the death of Kumla Dumont. And the friend said, yeah, you don't know. I said, no. And then he said, ah, he's one of the important personalities in the, in the, in the BBC. And then, and then I said, okay. And even when I went to work the full morning, um, I was asking of him, and a lot of uh, colleagues were telling me, in fact, that uh, we've really lost a, a very important uh, person. How did you hear about his news, and how did you take it? I didn't take it easy. Uh, the first time I had text message from Abu Dhabi, from some of my friends in Abu Dhabi, uh, about his death, and I was so surprised. I was so surprised. I was so surprised. I was down. I was impressed about some of his works, and uh, I can't say that I'm, I'm, I'm proud to be a, a black from Africa. I don't know him much, but I really felt uh, very uh, down and sympathized with uh, his uh, Since I heard of his death, I've read a little bit about him and I've uh, really been inspired by uh, his uh, achievement. Those uh, who are following uh, him through 
to actually, I mean, be humble and uh, learn because I, I, I think the artists have actually heard, heard a lot of, a lot about him and at the same time learn a lot about him, you understand? Some Ghanaians in London paying tribute to Komla Dumo, of course, may his soul rest in peace. But up next, we bring you business news. All right, so Abigail Adumako has joined me and we're bringing you business. So what's up in business, Abigail? Well, quite a lot. You know, we have uh, President Mahama at the World Economic Forum talking about uh, minerals and how we can yeah. actually process them in a sport. And also, we will be talking about some growth in terms of GDP. That sounds like good news. Let's see how yeah. it goes. Yeah, exactly. Now, I'm Abby Yoladumako and here's where we bring you updates on business. Now, President John Mahama on Wednesday opened the World Economic Forum session on Responsible Mineral Development Initiative. The initiative aims at helping countries develop their mineral resources in a socially and economically responsible manner. In his opening remarks at the session, attended by Liberian President Ellen Selev Johnson and Guinean President Alpha Conde, President Mahama said Ghana is seeking international cooperation to move her from a primary processor of mineral resources to a secondary one. We introduce a windfall tax, and yet they won't allow us to implement a windfall tax in our country. I mean, they threaten to lay off workers if we implement a windfall tax. And because we the jobs, you know, and you don't want workers laid off, and then you're for your coerced to, you know, uh, go along. But increasingly, we're also talking about secondary processing. And if we're to create jobs for the young people who live in Africa and who are in the communities and who can create social problems, you know, for the mining industry, then we need to move some of that secondary processing into Ghana to create additional jobs for the young people to be able to do. We export bauxite in its raw form. And then we import alumina to feed our aluminum smelter. And then we export the aluminum and re-import aluminum to feed our aluminum industries. Sometimes it just doesn't make sense. He said Ghana still leaves her accolade as the Gold Coast, but the sector faces few challenges like illegal mining, which resulted in the deportation of about 4,700 illegal miners. I mean, government wants to take more royalties and more taxes. Communities want to see better developments, you know, around them. And the mining industries want to see uh, greater profits. The main challenge is with illegal small-scale mining. Mm -hmm. Incidentally, the big mining corporations, you know, have an identifiable reputation, and so it's easy to go after them when there's reckless mining. And we often make them post a bond to reclaim the land after they finish mining. But with the illegal small-scale mining, you know, that's where we have a difficulty. And recently we had an invasion of foreign nationals into the mining sector. And um, we had to carry out an exercise to evict them. We need technical expertise in how to regulate small-scale mining. And that is where the major threat, you know, to the environment uh, is in my country. President Mahama noted that apart from a number of legislation passed to inject sanity into the sector, there is the need for technical expertise to manage the system. The World Economic Forum in Switzerland is being attended by world leaders, businessmen and women. Well, Ghana's producer price inflation for goods and services for December 2013 went up by 15.4 percent. This, the Ghana Statistical Service says, was largely due to the utility subsector, which recorded the highest year-on-year -year producer price inflation rate of 41 percent. The increase in the producer price inflation to 15.3% represents an increase in producer inflation by 2.3 percentage points relative to the rate in November 2013. The month-on-month -month change in producer prices between November 2013 and December 2013 was 1.6%, with a utility subsector recording the highest year-on-year -year PPI of 41%. The PPI, after declining continuously over a five-month period to record the lowest rate of 4.7% in August 2013 has since been on the rise. And when we look at the utility sub, uh, sector, uh, we see that the rate has been fairly stable over the 10-month period 
between December 2012 and July 2013, uh, recording a, a figure of 0.2%. Um, the rate remained the same for August 2013, increased sharply to 40.5% in October 2013 as a result of the increases in the utility prices. The rate then increased slightly to 41.0% in December 2013. She explained challenges in the exchange rate impacted on the manufacturing sector, which recorded a high inflation rate of 17.4%. A lot of the inputs are imported. And uh, as far as competitiveness is concerned, obviously, if you have to uh, pay so much for your inputs, then means at the end of the day, the cost of your produce will, will be higher. And so it will have to be passed on to the consumer. And when that happens, if there are similar products that are being uh, imported or that are being produced locally that have lower prices, then you stand a risk of not getting your products uh, purchased. The mining and quarrying subsector further dropped from a negative 14.9% in November 2013 to negative 13.2% in December 2013. Real GDP for the third quarter of 2013 grew by 0.3% from the 6% recorded in the second quarter of 2013. The growth is as a result of the services sector recording a high growth rate of 6.7%. The nominal gross domestic product for the third quarter of 2013 stood at about 24.99 million cities, while the non-oil GDP at current prices was about 23.27 million. According to the Ghana Statistical Service, the three major sectors which contributed to the GDP estimate are the services sector which contributed a high of 46.3%, followed by agriculture with 30.4% and industry with 23.3%. Though the services sector showed no evidence of seasonality, the crops and cocoa subsectors of agriculture reflected a positive growth of 2.2% over 1.5% recorded in the second quarter of 2013. The mining and quarrying subsector and the industry, however, declined, recording a rate of negative 14.7% over the 3.7% recorded in the second quarter. We had oil production declining by 16%, and that was as a result of operational maintenance of the Jubilee field. And then we are talking about the decline of, uh, uh, in the prices of gold and the, even the decline in the production of gold. So that alone, the production of gold, the decline was 29.7%. So when that happens, uh, it affects the GDP. We also had a shortfall in the production of diamond by 11.3%. The manufacturing subsector also recorded a negative growth of 4.7% over the previous quarter's negative rate of 19.8% due to the production of food and beverages, refined petroleum products, and the manufacture of paper and its products. Well, that'll be all by way of business. I'm Abigail Aduma Quinchi. George Adu Jr. comes up next with sports. Right, let's find out what's top of the sports agenda tonight. And spokesperson of the Ghana FA, Ibrahim Sanidara, has denied reports of a Black Stars friendly with Montenegro in March 5. The Football Association of Montenegro had announced reaching an agreement with Ghana for a friendly of a city stadium in their country's largest city. But Sanidara tells Joy Sports the FA is yet to confirm any friendly for the Black Stars. So far, it's what we are reading on the Montenegrin FA's website. Officially, um, the communications department of the FA has not been informed that this is the situation. If that is indeed the situation, the, the general secretary of the FA will inform us and will duly inform the public. You remember just last week, uh, Colombia also came out to say they were playing Ghana. So take your time, relax. When we have reached a deal that is you know, agreeable to Ghana Football Association, will make it public. In, in football, many, many things happen. In football, like I say, many, many things happen. The Colombian FA, for instance, have some great names who help in the running of the league, like Faustino Asprilla. 
Yet la just last week, they had, they, they had made public statements that they were playing Ghana. So this happens in football. It's the reason why we want to take our time to do everything and announce firm conclusions, not conjecture. Right, so time to talk about the Chan ongoing in South Africa and Ghana at least now know exactly who we are playing in the quarterfinal. It's going to be DR Congo because DR Congo and Gabon have qualified from their group. The last games in that one, they have it. Gabon beat Mauritania by four goals to two and DR Congo beat Burundi by two goals to one. Therefore, this is how the table is looking like out there in Group D. Gabon topped the group with seven points. DR Congo have six points. So remember, the Ghana topped the group in C, and so we are going to be playing the second in Group D. So Ghana is up against DR Congo, while Gabon will play Libya in the quarterfinal. We'll look up to that this weekend. Let's talk about the Australian Open. And four-time champion Roger Federer ended Andy Murray's Australian Open hopes with a dramatic win in the quarterfinals, while Rafa Nadal avoided becoming the latest victim of the tournament with a battling four-set win over Giro Dimitrov. More tributes from the sporting fraternity continue to pour in for the late Komla Dumont. And tonight we hear from Deputy Sports Minister Joseph Yamin. Yes, um, I met him in South Africa in 2010. Personally, we've been speaking, I mean, uh, as politicians, we'll definitely be talking to, I mean, big guys in the media front. And uh, so we spoke to him once. But I met him personally in South Africa during the World Cup. Um, when we, after our second match, we, we went to Mandela's house. He was just around and we saw him, we had some futures with him. Well, he was a nice guy, a gentleman, straight to the point, um, wants to put out the issues as it is. Uh, with such a person who wants to get deep down to the, the grassroots of every issue and want to let the public know, especially with this issue about, is it about Senate or something, where he fought, I mean, uh, to get the truth out. Fabi of Sports, my name is George Adijuna. Gifty will join us with more. You have a good night. Sports was brought to you. Well, well, in showbiz tonight, hit life sensation Ochoami Kwame, as well as veteran broadcaster Kwesi Che Gakwa, have also entered their names in the book of condolence opened for the late broadcast journalist Komla Dumo here at Multimedia. KKD, this is the moment to recite a poem for the late Komla. Rest in peace, Komla, distinguished broadcaster. An illustrious son of Africa has fallen. An intelligent citizen of the world is gone. A good father, husband, and son has left us mourning. May his family and friends be comforted and be strong. A public administrator, sociologist, and psychologist by learning. A broadcast journalist and newscaster by choice. The nation that birthed him can stop waiting. The continent of the world will bless his fine voice. Well, self-acclaimed dancehall king Shatawali has sounded a caution to the organizers of the Ghana Music Awards, telling them not to nominate him if they will not give him any award after the nomination. We're ending the bulletin. Before we go, a look again at the top stories. A demolition exercise at Ajay Kojo in Straha East in the Tema metropolis has rendered over 200 families homeless. The exercise, exercise turned violent as warning shots were fired toward of residents who tried to salvage what was left of their property. President Mahama said a lack of inclusion would prevent African countries from being truly secure. He was speaking at the World Economic Forum at Davos in Switzerland. The Member of Parliament for Banda, Ahmed Ibrahim, has asked national security to get rid of foreign nationals encroaching on the Bui National Forest Reserve. In business, President Mahama is seeking international cooperation to process Ghana's mineral resources into secondary products. My name is Gifty Andalpia. Many thanks for your time. For more news, log on to myjoyonline.com. Do have a good evening.